Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another entry in our watercolor journal. Let's just chill and paint some beautiful clouds. My watercolor journal today is my pink Paul Rubens watercolor journal. It's 140 pound cotton hot pressed watercolor paper. And I'm gonna be using some painter's tape just to create pretty borders around the edges. Now with hot pressed paper, because it is so delicate, it's a good idea to kind of fuzz it up ahead of time before putting it on your paper. So I'm just gonna stick it to my sleeve right here and just kind of make it a little less sticky. And then we'll affix that like that. Hopefully this will help protect your paper when you remove the tape. So with your fuzzed up tape, go ahead and add the borders. I did make the mistake before in some of my earlier journal entries where the paper actually got kind of ripped up from the tape. So I'm trying to prevent that this time. And then to help my book not move around so much, I'm gonna tape it down to the table like that. There we go, nice and secure. I'm using three primary colors today, a cool red, a warm blue, and a primary yellow. This is Daniel Smith Ultramarine Blue, Holbein Permanent Alizarin Crimson, and Daniel Smith Hansa Yellow Light, but you can use any three set of primaries that you have. Make sure that you have a water jar and some paper towel for blotting. For these clouds today, we're gonna to be using the wet and wet technique. And so you're gonna want a nice, soft round brush. I'm gonna be using a Creative Mark Rhapsody Kalinsky Sable round brush. This is a size eight. The nice thing about natural bristle brushes is that they're just so soft and they can hold a lot of water and a lot of paint. So we're gonna give this brush a try today. So swirl your brush in the clean water. And now you might be thinking, if you're looking at the reference photo, which I'll include in the description below, you might be thinking there's a lot of purple in those clouds and some oranges. And so that's what we're gonna be using our primary colors for. We're gonna do a little bit of mixing to achieve purple and orange and just get those simple mixes in our clouds today. But let's go ahead and start with pure clean water. Paint your clean water all over the paper. Whoops, there's still a little bit of fuzz and hair <laughs> from my tape that got picked up. So peel that off if necessary. Now try to make your paper just a nice glossy coating of water. It should be soaking into the paper, but not pooling or puddling or forming any wells anywhere. You want it to be evenly dispersed all across the paper. This is where having cotton watercolor paper is really gonna help it does spread out so much more evenly with 100% cotton paper versus cheaper wood pulp based papers. So if that's something you don't have, you might not get the same effects as you're seeing here, but you can still definitely try it. All right, so let's start with our yellow color first. We're gonna take our Hansa Yellow Light. I'm gonna swirl it with a little bit of water in my palette first. And notice how I don't have too much water in my brush. It's soaking up nicely inside the brush. You don't wanna have any excess water when you're working with wet and wet in your brush or else it will push aside whatever's already on the surface of your paper. So we're just gonna kinda of blob the yellow into the center of our clouds right here. I'm just following the general shapes of what I'm seeing in the reference photo. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of the white of the paper in some of these areas where I see the clouds are a little bit more brilliantly lit. We have to work fast when we're using wet and wet because the paper begins to dry quite quickly. Now take some of your alizarin crimson and mix it in with your yellow. A little more yellow. We're going for a nice rich orange tone. And again, remove any excess water from your brush by gently swiping along the edge of your palette and then inside of that yellow, go ahead and drop in your orange. The goal here is to get a really beautiful, fluffy, spontaneous look in the clouds. And if your paper does begin to dry, that's okay. You can let it dry all the way. I'm removing excess water on my paper towel right there. Just let it dry all the way and then you can start again with a fresh layer of wet and wet once your initial wash is dry. The danger is to try to keep piling on layers of paint when your paper is beginning to reach a drying stage and that can actually cause the paint to lift off the surface of the paper and you don't really want that. 
All right, so I think we've got kind of the center of our painting here blocked in with the yellow and the orange. And there's some clouds here that overlap the yellow that go from purple to orange on the edges. So that's what I'm painting in right here. The same thing down here, you see those purple clouds that have almost these orangey tips or edges around them. And here at the bottom, I can see that my paper has already begun to dry a little bit because when I put down the paint, it's really not moving at all or spreading out. So I'm adding in a little bit of water just to help that soften some more. I'm going to take some yellow, drop it in on the bottom corner right here. And now I think I've already reached that stage because this is hot pressed paper, it dries pretty quick, where I don't want to touch it anymore with more colors on top or it will disrupt the layers underneath. So we're going to let that dry all the way before we do our purple layer next. All right, our paper has sufficiently dried that we can do the next layer of wet and wet, which is going to be our simple purple clouds. I'm gonna grab a second brush because I think it's a good idea to have a brush just for your clean water for wetting your paper and a separate brush for mixing your colors. So what I have now is another Rhapsody Kalinske Sable brush. This one's a size six. You can see it's just a little bit smaller than the size eight. And I'm actually gonna use the larger brush now for my clean water. You can see I've switched out my water jar. And with the smaller brush, I'm gonna mix up my purple. So first of all, I'm gonna take my ultramarine blue. And I'm actually going to have a little bit of pure blue on hand for some of the light blue shades inside the clouds up here. So in this other palette, I'm gonna mix up some more. Ultramarine, a little stronger, and dab in my Alerzone Crimson so that I have a nice, rich purple. To get the most beautiful purple possible, you want to mix a blue and a red that are close to each other on the color wheel. So for example, this red, this Alerzone Crimson, leans a little bit more purple or blue already, and this blue leans a little bit more towards the red side. So the two of them, when combined, creates a gorgeous royal purple. All right, so with your purple mixed up, you can pre-wet your paper. So set your other brush aside, take your clean water brush, and paint all over once again. You can see the necessity of using clean water on this because we are gonna go over the top of what we've already painted. The reason for that is that wherever your water goes, your paint is going to flow. And so if you just stop your water halfway through, the paint's gonna stop there and form a hard line. And we don't want that with soft clouds. We want it to look all soft and diffused and fuzzy. So we are gonna still stop where our paint goes because we don't want it to overlap into our beautiful yellow and orange, but it's going to have a soft, fuzzy edge because we've wet the paper all over. So now go ahead and take your purple and you can start in the upper left corner or whichever cloud you want to begin with and just use a dabbing motion and paint in that cloud. And I'm just loosely following what I see in my reference photo. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I am overlapping into that orange a little bit. And then I'm going to take some of that ultramarine and drop that in a little bit in between the purple. I'm going to remove some of that paint and then grab more of that pure light ultramarine and drop that in at the top. And I do want this light blue to be a nice undertone on the right side of the painting. So with more blue and less purple, removing even some more of the purple, I'm pulling that color in towards the center of the painting, overlapping the orange slightly, but leaving it very light in value. And then I'm going to grab more of my rich purple and continue this dark cloud shape over here. This one is so interesting. It's overlapping the yellow. It's a bit darker than the rest of the clouds. You may need to mix up a little more paint as necessary. So dropping in your rich royal purple using just a gentle blotting motion. You can see we're having a soft brush can really help with this effect. Leave little gaps or little white spaces in between your brush strokes. This is going to suggest the sunshine coming through those clouds and it's going to give it a much more backlit, brilliant array effect. And 
If your paper is beginning to dry a little, that's okay. You can always do more layers. But I think we are going to be able to squeeze all this in in this one layer. We'll have to see once it dries. Remember that watercolor dries a little bit lighter, so you may end up adding another layer anyway at the end if it dried lighter than you expected. You can add in a few more dark streaks so with a little more ultramarine if you wish. But you can see how those simple three colors can produce such a beautiful spectrum when you mix them together. I'm going to dip into my orange a little bit and drop in some more rich orange around the edges of this dark purple cloud, allowing it to blend with the purple a little bit. And keep it really simple. Don't go overboard with these shapes. And as it begins to dry, this is the most important thing. Leave it alone. Don't mess with your clouds. If it is still wet enough that you can get away with dropping in more color over the top and it'll soften, by all means do that. But as it begins to dry, the paper is maybe beginning to buckle a little bit as it's starting to stretch out again. Just leave it alone. You don't want to mess with that. And I think we're beginning to reach that stage. I'm going to squeeze just a few more little clouds in here while it's still wet enough that the paint will softly disperse. Just adding a few darker shadow shapes in some of these clouds at the bottom. Want to give it a little more dimension. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. That was so much fun. Make sure to let it dry all the way before you remove your tape. All right, let's see how we did. Gently remove your tape, and I think our fuzzing the tape up a little bit helped a lot because it's not ripping the paper this time, thankfully. But you still want to be gentle when you remove it. And you can see we got these beautiful, perfect, clean borders. That was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more simple cloud tutorials like this one. It's really amazing what you can do with the wet and wet effect. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.